because there's testimonials on our business page from multiple people mm -hmm. that have given this to almost, you know, guaranteed death bearded dragons and they give it to them and they bounce back. Yeah. So I think it's the mixture that we have that we give to these animals that creates that perfect storm. Like you said, could it be a fluke? Absolutely. Is it a fluke? Nope. It's this. All right. Now, when he was talking about that, I actually bought a bottle of that at, at the uh, Daytona show. Mm -hmm. Am I in there? <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I happen to have a $4,000 ball python that I, I kind of overbred a little bit. And I felt bad about it. And that's what, one of the reasons why I picked up an ultrasound so I can keep track of, you know, the follicle growth on the female. So I know when to pair my males to the females. And that's a mistake I learned. And he was off feed for literally close to nine months. Um, he started losing weight and everything. I've tried all the tricks. I drove him around, mm -hmm. put him in smaller everything. tubs, every single trick, talked to different breeders, nothing worked. So I talked to, to him about this product here and I said, I wonder if I give it to, my, to the ball python, um, if it would kick its food back up or kick mm -hmm. his feeding response back up. Trigger. I, yeah, trigger. And I gave it to him I think the day after I came home yep. and I, I offered him a rodent nothing happened I took it out a week later I offered maybe it took a little time for the mm -hmm. medicine to kick in mm -hmm. he ended up eating twice for me I fed him a small ASF and then I fed him a large mouse yep. and I've mm -hmm. tried ASFs mice hoppers rats oh all different sizes I tried so many different tricks <laughs> it talked to several breeders for the last eight and a half months could not get this guy to eat could be a fluke they do bounce but, back sometimes, mm -hmm. but I am definitely going to be using this and promoting this stuff because I believe this probably had something to do with it. Yeah. If not, we don't know for sure, but it worked for me. It, 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 I'm going to be able to <laughs> breed my male again next te season because of that. Yeah. I think it's because of that, but yeah. definitely... Um, I'll almost guarantee it's because of this. Because yeah. I have males that go off feed, and as boa breeders, you guys, some of you will know, males will go off feed. They just, they'll breed themselves to death. What this does is this replaces all the stuff that they're using. You know, calcium is a big thing in animals and they only get it from the bones of the animals that they eat. We give them extra calcium with this and you can't overdose it, it's just a supplement. You can't hurt, we can take this. I could drink this whole bottle and be fine. So it, it just gives me that one up on breeding. You know, I yeah. mean, you hear so many people when their females give birth, oh, she looks like a flat tire. We don't, we don't get that anymore. You know, we feed our girls right. We give this once a month while they're gravid through the meal. We're working on an injectable too. Okay. Because a lot of people are complaining about I don't want to feed my gravid females, which is fine. I get it But so we're working on an injectable supplement for the animal. It's it's in the process It's in the so works. when you say an injectable you're talking about like a to syringe. Skin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, subdermal injectable supplement just like bodybuilders do <laughs> But it's a lot healthier than that. There's no steroids in it It's all supplemental form and vitamins and some people would rather do that than you know, give it to the rat or pump it into the rat and give it to them. And I'm okay with that. So we're working on something that's going to be easier for people that want to do the injectable rather than give this to their food source. Uh, no. And sense. we're working on something to put in the water as well. Like I actually tried be... putting some into the water. And it works. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I... we're working on something that it's not going to dilute as much because yeah. you don't know what the milligrams exactly. So if I can give you something to say put you know half a milligram or a whole cc in the water it'll dis it'll disperse enough to where that animal's getting what it needs to get with those supplements Makes right sense. now we don't know if it's getting enough you know which because depending on the water bowl this could dilute so much you're not getting anything mm. right so we're working on that we're working on numbers so. so if somebody wanted to to get some of that you would you ship just that or they only have to catch you at shows i could ship it okay yeah this can be shipped i've shipped it all over the u.s um once again it was something that we've held tight to ourselves using it by ourselves just because we know how negative the community is yeah. you know oh it needs to be fda approved no it doesn't because the supplement is not a medicine so and once again we've overdosed animals with this i've taken it my son's taken it we know that this is safe no matter what you do you know there's idiots out there that'll take this and put their whole thing into the snake and then call me and be like oh you killed my snake it can't mm -hmm. kill a snake all it can do is help the snake. It's just calcium and vitamins. Right. So we've already covered all those bases. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we use it. And I don't know what's in it. I use calcium vitamins and some secret. Yeah, there's secret stuff in here. Something there's in Da Vinci there. formula in here. <laughs> and that's, what, that's how we're going to leave it. But we can't tell all our secrets because then you lose your successes doing that. Absolutely. And that's how people, you know, a zoo med is a big deal because they, they sell a lot of supplements and they do the calcium and stuff like that. And that's great. They're a great company. But this is a little bit different. You don't have to dust the food. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Mm. So if we can put it in a water bowl, 
to where it can absorb, I think that's going to really help people out. How people can, are lazy. How can people changer. get a hold of you to, to purchase oh, that? Oh, my Instagram, my Facebook, my business page, DaVinci Boa, uh, at fa you know, Facebook DaVinci Boa page, Instagram DaVinci Boa. I'm easily accessible. I, I'm easily found. I yeah. can't hide. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, after I, I got that mail to finally start eating, I'm definitely a believer in that myself. So. Well, like I told you, that monitor guy up in New York, um, major, major monitor breeder, and he got a big bottle from us. And he had a five to six thousand dollar monitor that her legs were turning in. Uh, yeah. I tried that for years before I brought it out into the public and said, "Hey, I've been using this. You might want to try it." And you'd be surprised how many shot me, how many people shot me down. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm because there's already a site. product out there that works. Yeah. That doesn't mean that product won't work. It works for me. Mm -hmm. right. It works really well for me. You know, I, I produce boas every single year. Most most of the time you know, a couple hundred a year, every single year. It's hard to do that with consistency. A lot of people have the roller coaster year, they call it, they'll have a great year, and then the next year they won't have anything. The next year they might have a couple. I can do it consistently every year. Now, um, when do you give your animals to supplement? Is it just once a year right before breeding season, or how often do you do that? Yeah, the girls will get it as, when they start breeding, they'll get a, a monthly supplement. So once a month they'll get depending on the size of the animal, half a cc, full cc, whatever the animal size is, they get it once a month while they're breeding and then once a month while they're grabbing. And you're feeding frozen thaw. Oh yeah. So what you're doing is you're just taking a syringe and you're just injecting it right into the rodent when you're feeding. That's it. Okay. Simple. It's really Easy. simple stuff. The way we do yeah. things is we try to make everything convenient. There's yeah. nothing complicated. The way we roll our paper, the way we do our cleaning, it's we try to make everything easy for us and the animals. And that's very, very easy for the animal. Less stress. She's going to eat anyways. You might as well just give her more supplement is what yeah. you're doing. You're just mm -hmm. helping her get through her gestation. Is And now we're finding out that it helps with animals that don't eat. Yeah. Well, that's new to us. Well, it's just like uh, females, when they get pregnant, they go on prenatal vitamins. That's so. exactly what that is. Now, when, I, when, my, when the snake that I was talking about that didn't eat, obviously I didn't put it into a rodent because it wasn't eating. Mm -hmm. I actually took a, a syringe without the needle on the tip. Um, actually, you gave it to mm -hmm. us. Is there a certain name for that type of syringe? No, you can syringe. get them anywhere. Yeah, yeah just yeah. it's just a regular plastic syringe. And I just kind of, you know, filled it up and put it in its mouth a little bit, maybe maybe a half inch in and then just squeezed it in there and made yeah. sure that nothing came out and it worked for me got a meeting after eight months eight we got and a half lucky months. with that stuff uh, like i said i didn't expect it to work the way it is and this has helped me with my business financially and keeping more animals alive too and then obviously yeah. finding out that people are giving it to these super high-end lizards and it's bringing them back from metabolic bone disease it's, it's like a miracle liquid is what it is yeah and like I said, you have people out there that are going to be like, oh, it's 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 not going to work. There's going to be people that, like that anywhere. And I in get anything. that. And, and everybody knows me. I've been doing this long enough. I have my hater you know, fans out there. I get that. But it really does work. And it's not a ploy to make money. It's That's it's one of those things where I think it's better for the, the animal, you know? Now when, when they're in shed, do you do anything like moist the paper towel at all or just so the water here, bowl? Here's what I do when they're in shed. Obviously we have back heat and we run our therms at 89. So I just do this. Pour a little bit on them. That's it. Okay. That's it. And then when, when that hits that heat back there, it creates it that cloud of moisture yeah. and we don't have any shed problems. You know, Basically, we, we like do spray the larger ones down, like some of the bigger males and females will have a spray bottle, we'll spray them down mm -hmm. every now and then, but it's so moist and humid in here all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. We don't run humidifiers, we don't run anything. And during breeding season, I just open that window. Mm -hmm. I don't drop temperatures. Yeah. Nope, mm -hmm. I let mother nature do her job. And that's, I think that's why I have success compared to a lot of people that try to breed, because I just let mother nature work. I just open yeah. the window and let the cool air come in here for a few weeks. It drops all my temperatures the way they need to be. It, the snakes breed, everything goes. Because when you start playing with temperatures and dropping your rooms oh, and dropping yeah, these, mm -hmm. you got to remember all that stuff. And what I do is I open that window and just for a couple weeks it gets cool in here and I have no problem. He has a really cool head. Look at the eyes on that. Yeah, like ra really color. crazy eyes on these. Mm -hmm. And again, it has like so the lighter tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is another caramel albino version of the Central Americans. So these are all, he's yeah. going to be solid, like olive chocolate color. 
and you could tell he's losing all his pattern. Yeah. He's got solid black eyes. He still has so an different. iridescence too. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see it. He's got some cool orange on his tail. I love how the pat mm -hmm. the coloring goes into the belly, unlike yeah. the yeah. ball python. So. Yeah. He doesn't have like the mustache kind. It's kind of like no. A lot of your T positive stuff. And look, his they lose eyes it. are dark. See how he has that purple tongue though? Yeah. Cool. Even though even though he's dark, he's still an albino, so he's gonna have that purple tongue. <laughs> and then so you start finding all the cool John. combos. She's got it on. What, <laughs> now that's that's a raptor. This is a normal raptor. It's called a Coupe Pastel Raptor. It came from Holland, in the Netherlands. And um, so the, the extreme version is called the Super Raptor, and they're way different looking than a normal Raptor. And I'll show you what the Super looks like in a second. But he he's so the dad. Is gorgeous. He's the dad of these snakes you guys like, of the Kraken oh, okay. Raptors. Oh. This is the dad. That's the dad? No, this is the dad of That's him. the dad. Of, okay. Yeah. So this is the Hypo Raptor Kraken, and this is the dad. Wow. Mm. See, their heads are almost identical. Look. Wow, but that light color, that contrast on light. him, yeah. It's Especially hard, the it's eye hard to catch that. So you can't breed this to a dark snake. It has to go to a light mm -hmm. snake to, to create that to, yeah. uh, coloration. Wow. Busy. So this is an actual viable super. This is the super version of the raptor I just showed you. Wow. Look at his eyes. I'm looking at the sides. The That's sides good. are crazy. Yeah, yeah That's really, nuts. really neat looking. Tail. Yeah, so basically, you just take the tail, and there's a vent on all these animals have vents right here. Mm -hmm. You just rub all the way down, and if there's nothing there, it's a female. Okay. So, if how, how much pressure do you put? Not much. You, you can do it once you push, you'll figure it out. I'm gonna let you do this one. So, just take from the vent. Find the vent, it's a little bump right there, and then squeeze a little bit and go all the way to the tip of the tail. Keep going, right there. Did you feel anything? I, I felt like I felt like a BB, like that's the BB male. Gun. That's a male. That's the male. It's a BB. soft BB. Okay. And it's about halfway down from the vent to the tail. And if you feel that, it's a male. If you feel nothing, it's a female. It's it's you can't mess up. You cannot mess that's that up. Easy. It's there or it's not there.